Grow boss mic check check. I'll be with you guys in just a second. Oh yeah, it's the Grow Boss. It's what nine a.m. It's Saturday. It's time to start the webcast. Uh, I just want to thank everybody in Texas for uh, staying. That way, you guys could stay and listen and watch the webcast. I appreciate you guys uh, not leaving, especially Vicky. She lives in Texas. Vicky Ramirez, listen. I appreciate you staying, just so you could uh, watch the show. <laughs> oh man, yes. So. Listen, it's brutal in Texas. I have never seen bigger. I went to Texas to do that. I went to Texas to do that Texas road show. I have, my parents were travel agents. I have traveled the world. I have never seen bigger raindrops <laughs> than in Texas. Biggest raindrops I ever saw, Texas. Okay, so as long as I got you guys on, let's make sure my mic's working. Let me know as long as you guys can hear me. I think it's working. So uh, cheers. 
What's up? Happy Saturday. Everyone's talking about uh, who's betting 10,000 or more Mayweather versus uh, versus uh, McGregor. I just think it's super fun, even if it's uh, even if it doesn't have anything to do with anything. But listen, I listen Mayweather. I mean McGregor. He's fantastic. I mean, forget. Forget any kind of skills. Forget anything like that. If you just look at it, the guy just shows up. He's the king. I mean, he has no idea what's going on, right? I mean, you can't know what's going on. It takes, you know, a long time to be a professional. But I love it when people just show up like, I'm the boss. Thank you. Let it begin. I'm here. It was lame without me before, but now it is awesome because I am here. So five out of five, good. You got the video, Stone Island, Mexico. Oh, it's Will, oh, Will, good morning. All right, loud and clear, wake and bake. Who cares, what's up, everybody? Uh, so, so much going on in the country this morning. Storms, fighting, woo. <laughs> Reminds me of that episode of South Park where they kept saying shit, 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 shit. And eventually they put the curse out there and so much, so much. It turns out that uh, they were putting so much bad juju out there that it all came back to them. I'm just saying there's so many things going on today. Hopefully there's puppy and kitten rescues going on to sort of balance out all the problems. But it's brutal in Texas. Bah, okay, so it is nine o'clock. It is technically it's time for me to shart, start, shart. Bah, I said shart. <coughs> Amsterdam, North Carolina. Woo! Fire in the bowl. Woo! The store is coming along good today. Mm. The guy just left, but uh. Like, uh, the store is looking good. In fact, okay, so the number is 84 Grow Boss. If you want to call in, um, I believe uh, it's up and running. If you want to call in, the number is 84 Grow Boss. Um, let's see. You got me. Morgan News from the South. Sheriff Joe in 2024. Dude, that is so funny. Everybody should medicate and save puppies. Uh, 215 Richie Rich 215 Grow Boss laugh my ass off okay so let me uh, alright let me see what I got let me show you uh, okay so so let me show you what I got going on in the store okay switch to the store shot oh no Okay, hang on. Oh, there we go. Okay, so let's just start off with uh, Ralph. Oh, yeah. Ralph's got a bully stick. We were just playing fetch out back. Just quick shot of Ralph. All right, so what have I got going on in the store? Well, I think you guys probably remember this from last week, right? It looks like this. We got the Airstone Sunlight Supply. Um, I got my super neato stack of, uh, and we really are closing in on finishing the store, but I got my super neat, neato stack of uh, rock wool and cloth pots and those little plastic pots and those little plastic bags down there at the bottom. I even got a couple things scooched under there. So it's the Grow Boss desk and what's behind me, Clone X and all the cloning station. That's what goes on back there. I haven't quite finished filling up these, uh, these shelves right here. I got that trim pro, but that's silly to have there. And there's an empty space there. And there's really no reason to have the uh, tubing up there. We could have more boxes and stuff. And I have a couple of more fans that need to be put back up. And we've got the bar finished up, the counter finished up over here today. But you can see I got my GH nutrients all straightened up. There they are. I got my GH nutrients. I got almost as many rows of advanced nutrients. I've got all of these going on down here. And uh, we got fans, all those nutrients, fans. I love my grid wall. It's coming out super nice. Oh, so many products on the grid wall. 
And then uh, over here on this grid wall, I got bulbs and more stuff. These are the shelves that we just put in on this side. Remember, the counter used to be up here. So these are the shelves. That's my security shelf right there. Really, it's pretty much just an advanced nutrient, 250, 500 mil storage case for advanced nutrients. Got more boxes on top, you know, more product up there. Um, all sorts of microbes and Clonex and, you know, green pad up there on the shelf. I've got a, a TNB bottle right there that's holding up that sign that says TNB on there with the price. A Myco Bloom, Mycorrhizas, lots of Ona. Yeah, I like seriously bought some inventory. I brought like a like a 10 light AC 36,000 split unit. Here's one of the other boxes I brought in. I got another one over here. Oh, I had no idea how big these boxes were. I mean, clearly I can't keep them both up front. I mean, that box is like eight square feet. I mean, it's four tiles by two tiles. I had no idea how big these AC boxes were because I was selling stuff. I was buying this and that and all sorts of hodgepodge stuff. But listen, the boxes stack so much nicer. All right. So we got what's next. All right. We got the counter. So the new counter's done. I made like a facade up there so we can screw some fans to it. I can hang a grow boss shirt. We're gonna put a TV in that corner right there. Nice countertop. You know, trying to look, the look, I got two monitors. They both show the same thing. It's not on yet because I just got the uh, wiring done. Just finished up, but we got some uh, nice shelves, you know, the squares behind it and you know, from over here, you know, it's accessible now. It freed up an enormous amount of room in my store too, to just, you know, of course, just to put more inventory. But I got to tell you, the best thing that it turns out is when I do my show, like see that TV up there, that TV. So wherever I walk in my store, I can see what's happening on the show. So I'm sure that the camera's pointing in the right direction. And my security cam, I turn that on to my show during the show now. So when I'm standing over here and I'm pointing at this, I'm actually watching the screen. I'm like, oh, okay. So I really am aimed at the advanced nutrients or the green pad or the TNB or the TV. Now there will be one more. There will be one more TV that goes right there. That'll be for customers right there in the corner, but I'll also be able to see it. It'll hook up to the computer. And so that's my, uh, that's my workstation. I have not worked out why there's a little bit of green dots and stuff like that. I'll have to look that up. That sort of just showed up. A um, couple of the lessons I learned was you need a uh, USB repeater to go more than 30 feet. So um, Mazatlan, um, so you can only go uh, like 30 feet without repeating. And I think maybe the repeaters are causing me a little, a little bit of grief because when I look at, like when I come over here to set up, oh, just love my uh, QVC, QVC station. Oh, what's that? It's got a dragon right on the blade. It's got a dragon right on the blade. So I don't know if you guys are seeing it. I was going to ask today, but I've got like, uh, when I'm looking at the monitor, I got like fuzzy lines over it. It doesn't seem to be every monitor. So let me know, like, like testing one, two, three. So let me know if that's showing up fuzzy or it's just this monitor right here. But that's my QVC table. <laughs> uh, so that's where things stand at the moment. The fight is fixed. No, I did not get a good from the Philippines. Woo. No, I did not get a good deal on those ACs. What I did was I got them for wholesale, but then they also come with a warranty. You know what I mean? Like it's a real thing when you're going to buy, you know, $2,500 worth of equipment. And there are a couple things that I learned about ACs too. There's a, there's a efficiency rating called SEER that tells you, let's see. Uh, see, I don't even remember now. Let's see, Google. Let's let's do this together on this side. Um, let's see, internet is this one. Google, and let's look up Sear AC 
efficiency rating. Let's check out the images and we'll probably get a graph. The higher the sear, the greater the efficiency. There we go. So 23 sear, 16. So I've got, so I can buy 18 and 14 sear. So that's pretty good. I mean, 14 sear, one, two, three, four on that side, four on that side. So 14 is right in the middle and I've got some 18 sear. There's some other graphs. Ooh, proposed running costs, super technical graphs. But I will say that uh, there comes that point where, you know, you start buying um, uh, the right equipment and the expensive equipment. And, um, and, and so I'll tell you a story. Like if you guys have a question about growing, the number is 84 Grow Boss. I don't really have anything going on today except I'm sitting in the back of the store doing the show, drinking my coffee, smoking these bowls, and talking to you. Good morning, Texas. Good luck. Hang on. Get your wings on. Get your floaties on. So, yes. So, okay. Anyway. So you guys have been tracking me. You guys have sort of been watching as I as I've been building up the store again, and you've watched the inventory. Uh, you've watched the inventory come into the store. That's weird. Okay, it's E E R. Yeah, eight ounce gloves. Okay, so I've got these new ACs, and and and, and really. To some extent, you know, used equipment is great. And I make a lot of money off used equipment. But when sometimes when people come in, they just want to go home and set their shit up. Um, hydroponics. Oh, hey, good morning. You're on at the Grow Boss. Uh, hey, Grow Boss. Morning, sir. Hi, good morning. I spoke with you last week. I spoke with you last week about the, the two by four, ten, five foot tall. We discussed about the, um, running the T5 in it. Yes. With the sea of green? Yes. Should I put that T5 all the way to the top of the tent, or should I, like, raise it up with the plants? Okay, so there's there's two versions of this answer, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you one of those long explanations that may or may not answer your question, but I'm pretty sure it will. Here's the thing. I just want to make the observation that light falls off with distance, right? The further away you get from the light, the less right. light you get. That's why we can grow plants on this planet because the sun is 96 million miles away. So my observation is this. I don't care if you put eight lights at four feet. I don't care if you put six lights at three feet. I don't care if you put four lights at two feet. I don't care if you put two bulbs at one foot. Technically, all of those things should be the same mathematically, right? Right. Okay. So mathematically, if you lose half the light with the distance, then, then it doesn't matter if you put a thousand watt light 20 feet away. It's all going to be the same light. So my question is, do you want to spend the extra money on electricity? Do you want to spend the extra money on cooling? So if those answers are no, and I'm looking for, I'm walking around my store looking for a pen. If those answers are no, the question always is, why would you put eight bulbs at four feet? You might want to consider putting four bulbs at three feet or two bulbs at two feet. So let me show you a picture to give you an idea and it'll show up on, there's a little bit of a delay, but it'll show up in a minute. I just want to say that in terms of math, the distance between this pen and the desk mathematically can always be divided in half. It's two feet, it's one foot, it's six inches, it's three inches, it's 1.5 inches, 0.75 inches. See what I'm saying? It can always be divided in half such that the pen should not mathematically be able to hit the table. So, and pajama, like, see, that's what I mean. Start in the middle, four inner, four outer. Listen, it's too much work. What I want to suggest is this. It is appropriate. Oh, I was going to show you a picture. Let me show you this picture and then let me sort of uh, get into what I tell you guys. Okay, so this is blam. Look at that. Okay. Oh, you know what? I want to show you the picture before this actually. 
This is, we've seen this picture lots of times. There's 10 plants under a 100. There's 10 plants under a 200. Then he divides the plants and he puts five plants under a 200. He does not increase the light. He halves the plant count. And this is super important because there's a couple of things happening here. When you ask me, you, you, when you ask me about, when you ask me about how much light, because in, in, and I believe that we've already actually worked this one out on this picture. No, I guess I didn't save it. Um, I just want to point out that this light is, is 100 watt. This light is 200 watt. This light is 200 watt. This light is 200 watt. And my observation here is that the top of second and the bottom of third when you shift. Listen, you could be at the top of second, shift into third, and don't change the mileage. The RPMs change, the power band change, but your miles per hour does not change. What I would like to suggest here is that this person has gone from 100 watts to 200 watts, both with 10 plants, and then they've gone, they've stayed at 200 watts, but they've halved the plant count. If you half the plant count, technically those plants are getting twice the light because 200 watts divided by 10 is 20, but 200 watts divided by five is 40. Therefore, the plants can grow twice as big. So when we talk about light, he could have taken that two, look at the 100 watt light is literally, let's just say 10 inch, one foot above the plant. Let's just say they're one foot above the plant. He could have put that 200 watt light two feet above the plant. So he could have put a 400 watt light four feet above the plant. You could have put a 600 watt light, which is twice as bright as a 400, eight feet above the plant. You could have put a thousand watt light 12 feet away from the plants. And that's why I tell you guys, what the fuck are the manufacturers talking about when they tell you to put that shit two feet away? If this is 100 watts of, of granted, of granted T5 light, 100 watts of T5 light, which is really like 50 watts of HID, because if you take a 50 watt HID, it's, you know, it's like almost twice as bright, probably like 30% brighter for the same electricity. Do you know what I mean? It's 10 times hotter for a little more light. Wow. But that's the idea. So my suggestion for you guys is that there's a couple of ways to handle this. For instance, yellow light, third gear, 1700, boom, drop it into second, 4500, punch it, you're through the light. So there comes this point where you may want your plants to get a little more light. Now, they could either grow toward the light or you could lower the light. Soon as a grower asks me if they could do more, the answer is automatically no. There is no doing more. There's just leaving the fuck alone and not killing your plant. So to put it in perspective, here are the lights and here is the distance and the space between them. And at some point, this individual did not even increase the light. They cut the plants in half, sorry. They cut the plant count in half. They went from 10 plants to five. So there are several ways to handle the question that you're asking me. And that is, when do I give them more light, Grow Boss? Because technically, if they grow into the space, they're getting more light. So if your light's three feet away and your plant grows one foot, it, the light's now two feet away. Is that light too much? It's tough to know because your plants got physically bigger. Maybe it's just the right amount of light. Now let's just say it's just the right amount of light. Then if you're going to add four more bulbs, like you go from four to eight bulbs, you wouldn't keep eight bulbs at the same distance. If you have a 200 watt plant and you put it over 400 watts worth of light, really the only thing you could do is give it 200 watts with a 400 watt light. So you would have to put that light, let's say three feet away. So it's one foot from the light. And by the time you get three feet to the plant, it's 200 watts. Because if you have 200 watts worth of plant and a 400 watt light, you must put the 400 watt light so high over the plant that it's getting 200 watts so it can grow into the 400 watt space. Why? Because if the plant was 200 watts big yesterday, it's going to be 200 watts big today. Just because you increase the light doesn't mean that, doesn't mean that you're going to be able to, uh, 
a petite princess got picks of first grow, but doesn't mean you're going to be able to give it that much light. Just because you shift into third doesn't mean you go faster or slower. The RPMs change. The mileage that you get from the fuel changes. The energy, because you're out of the power band, changes. But your miles per hour do not change. All I'm suggesting is sometimes it's appropriate to run your plants a little big, pull them down, stretch them out. So you would always want to over grow veg. Why? Because if you don't put enough tops in flower, you're, where are you going to put the buds? Right? And we always look at this picture. I always show you the, uh, I always go back to the Thomas pictures. Um, just because we always have this discussion where this is the plant. This is the, I think it's a four by four with a 600 watt. And he said, what should I do? And I said, well, you should definitely fill up that space in the middle. Now look at it. Look at how much more full that is for nothing else than adding more plants. Now, adding more plants to the space, you do not increase PPM. All the plants are the same fucking size. Give them all the same PPM. He did not increase light. In fact, technically, he decreased the light because if you put in 50% more plant, now instead of four, 600 divided by 6, it's 600 divided by 9. So as things went from like 100, his plant went from 100 watts worth of light each to 75 each. But you can see how more appropriate it is in the canopy. Uh, what I'm suggesting is, is that when he came out of veg and he went into flower from a 400 watt veg to a 600 watt flower, the 600 watt light is all the way at the top. So the light is literally four and a half feet away. So when this plant grows a foot, a foot and a half more, and we have those pictures, what happens is, um, what they do is they get a foot closer. You can even still see the little CO2 bag up there, but they get closer. I mean, these all got eight inches taller. He hasn't quite finished. I'm just suggesting that these grow into the light. And, and I see your point. But I want you to see it from my point too that that eight bulbs or 400 watts at four feet is 200 watts at two feet mathematically. Now mathematically that pen and I'm I'm coming back to it. See I'm bringing it back around. Mac mathematically that pen yeah. should have never hit the table. Why? Because the distance between the pen and the table is always divisible by half. All I'm suggesting is that the pen hit the table and that you that 400 watts at four feet is not 200 watts at two feet. I'm just suggesting that there's this range where you can go higher in RPM, shift, chirp the tires, and get more power out of it. So that's as close as I can get you because, listen, 400 watts at four feet might work just fine for you. But in terms of... In terms of the actual visual, um, again, this was, uh, this was, this was week, this was week four, end of week four under 300 watt T5s. And this was week one, two, and three. And, and you can see how this grow does it. And that's why I like these pictures so much because this guy actually went out of his way to slowly increase the light. But I want you to notice in this picture that the distance that the light is from the plant is like always the same. So when he goes from 100 to 200, those are big plants already. I mean, they're already 100 watt plants. When he goes from 100 from 200 to half as many plants, they're big plants. Now, this is at the end of the week. So what I'd like you to picture is at the start of the week that those plants will be you know, a little further away because over the course of the week, they grew into the light and then they're going to get transplanted. And, and these things I think are, I, I always say week, but I think this thing is actually like on a 10 day schedule where every 10 days they go to the next one. I just say one week because on average we talk about four week veg, eight week veg, definitely eight week flower. But you guys know there's a little bit of transition and there's a little bit of this and that. And there's some questions about ripening. So that's why I tell you guys, it looks like, you know, there's a little bit of gimme between there. Is 400 watts at four feet the same as 200 watts at two feet? You, you see my point? You see my answer to your question? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 it makes sense. Right. I can't tell you which way to do it because 
uh, you might have a different plant count. Listen, I totally appreciate the call. Thanks. You, uh, you might change the plant count. You might have reflectivity inside a tent that this picture obviously doesn't have. All sc and listen, there doesn't look like. I mean, you look at this picture, and there just doesn't look like there's that much light scattering off the sides. Because when you do this right, and people always talk about the reflectivity and the mylar, and they paint their walls white and they cover them in mylar. Oh my God. It's so much work because the truth is a good grower can grow in the middle of the room and doesn't have to worry about any of that. Yes. So I'm the grow boss. And I was telling you about, we were talking about chain. If you have questions, you can call me. The number is 84 grow boss. We can talk about your garden. You can email me some pictures. We can talk about it. But I was talking about, you know, selling stuff and, you know, a little bit of the changes in the store. And, you know, we got a lot of new stores opened up again and they're big, you know, they're supplying the facilities that are, you know, some of them to some extent are struggling. And so we got all these new stores. So I'm redoing my store. You know, I've got, I've got this new look for my store. There's my wide angle store cam. You know, things are looking good. I'm investing in the store and I got to tell you, my sales have gone up. In fact, uh, so much so that I had a new grower come in. Oh, um, it was Bolivia. Remember how I told you the guy from Bolivia came in and bought me lunch and he wanted to set up his grow and he's got all these grows. Well, I'll tell you, he wanted to pay with a credit card. And I absolutely won't take a credit card or anything like that for any kind of big deal like that. But I never heard from him again. And I'll tell you, we've been running. There's been this scam running around town because me and the other stores call each other. We've had the scam where they come in from Puerto Rico and they have a credit card that matches their driver's license, but they're always Puerto Rican. There's always a minimum of two, sometimes three. And well, I don't know if they're Puerto Rican. They say they come from Puerto Rico. One of them is an English speaker. Usually it's a female uh, dyed blonde. <laughs> it's just like, you know, like they're traveling the United States buying on these credit cards. And literally one of the things that they do is they buy something, they buy something small, they buy another thing, they buy another thing. And the first that happened to me once, and I, I've been cognizant of it ever since. And I called the other stores and apparently I wasn't the first store. So I didn't help them save anything. And uh, my credit card didn't get bounced, but all of theirs did. And so as soon as I heard Bolivia, I thought, oh shit, that sounds just like Puerto Rico, even though clearly it's not, but you know what I mean? To, I just, so I denied the thing. So just to let you guys know how the story turned out, Bolivia never bought the system. He spent six hours in my store over two days building and talking to me about and whatever else was going on. So that was how that deal ended. However, somebody comes in four or five days ago and wants to talk about growing. He's ready to start growing the system. Not a, uh, not douchebag that left the uh, review on, on Google for me. Not that guy, some other guy. So he went through and we're, we're all done building a system and I write the whole thing down and I put it all together and, uh, and, and I put it all together and I'm, uh, there's, uh, okay. Hang on one sec. Okay. So Let me, I just got to get back to where I was because sometimes the windows change on the software. Um, so, bah, did it again. Nope. Okay, so that's the correct one. And let's see if I can open this up again. There, okay, let's hope this works to okay now i can check and make sure the live stream works and i'm not showing you guys my nonsense that's why i have two computers here the one for working the show the other one for for the thing and then of course i've got the five monitors that are all hooked up to the computer okay let's make sure I'm, my mic's on i've had so many problems let's make sure the live stream is going Okay. Puerto Rico's broke. People are leaving the island. Oh, and I'd like to say that I've set a record for the amount of viewers, like consistent on, on a Saturday. Okay. 
so my observation is that he, the guy comes in and it's from the videos and he's like, no, no, no. I drove all the way across town to deal with you. And I was like, brilliant. So I, I go and I build him his everything that he needs list. And he goes in his pocket and he pulls out three G's, but I had only spent 2,500 on my list. So you can't interrupt the flow. So I took the 2,500, loaded up all of his stuff. And then I said, Hey, you know, we could, uh, you know, we could put this together for you and that uh, we, we didn't add the fans in. So he's like, no, I'll get the fans next time. So I had to let it go, but it's my fault, right? Because I didn't have a list that I'm like, oh shit, why don't we just talk about this? And here's all the stuff, right? I mean, hoods, bulbs, ballasts. Um, in fact, why don't I just do it like this? Don't even need the, the close up cam anymore. So here it is, right? Like there are tents. Now we bought a couple different size tents. So there's hoods and bulbs and ballast. There's place for me to take notes and it's got everything listed on there. So this way I could have, even if he didn't have three G's and he only had 2,500 and uh, it was three G's, I would have been like, okay, set everything up, get this going. I could have circled any, everything and backed $500 out of it. So that would have been something that could have helped my store a little better too, right? If you guys watch my uh, Friday webcast, like uh, I uh, on Cannabis Information Network, I've been doing a little more about the business side of cannabis. It's sort of for stores and hydros, uh, uh, stores and hydro vendors only, and I do a little bit more about the business side. You know what I mean? We compare things like why is Best Buy still exist and not Circuit City? How many stores are there really? What websites are accurate and not for the counts of their stores? So we go through all that. Anyway. The number is 84 Grow Boss. If you have some grow questions that you want to talk about today, um, the show's on from 9 to 10 on Saturdays. It's on from 9 to 11 on Sundays. Sundays seem to be like people just, you know, just running me down with questions. Um, Maine is a blast to grow outside other than the thieves that are too lazy to grow their own. Yeah, and then they steal the shit early. It's always so much more work, right? And then, yeah. Uh, what is this new arrow from Canada? People need to gr learn to grow outside before they try to grow inside. Meh. People need to learn how to grow before they spend a lot of money on shit. I agree with that. Um, in fact, I think I've got somebody coming in next week, Sunday, and he's going, ah, forget his name, 420... Um, my ninja, bud ninja, 420, bah, I'm supposed to know these people's names. Yeah. Okay. I'm not even going to pretend I remember. So he's coming on the show and he's going to bring in press and, and, uh, and Denali princess. I saw the email. Let's, uh, okay. So, whew. listen, you know, flooding is bad in Texas when the boats sink. <laughs> Okay, so let me do this. I'm going to open up this folder. We'll just take a look. Denali Princess, Petite Princess, said she sent some pics over of her garden. Yeah. Wind zip. Somebody should just buy that company so they quit doing pop ups and just give it away for free. Okay. Come on, two images? Okay. All right, I'm not going to register. I'm not going to buy it. Okay, let's take a look at, let's put this in here. And now let's hope that uh, that petite princess didn't send me, <laughs> and send me a script image. Okay. Petite princess let's close a few ah okay this is let's do this okay there's one pick Ooh. I already see hydro tough to do hydro with that little light let's open up the other one with that with that quantity of light that light's 
much more appropriate for soil okay and then let's zoom in it's tough to tell if they're overwatered yet but that one sort you know that one looks like it's pretty level right there um they're sitting in uh, and just in case you guys didn't notice when we look at the system they're actually sitting in water so it actually looks like a fill drain system okay so they're sitting in water at the moment so it's being flooded Let's see, what are those? Uh, some sort of Home Depot price tag. Air pump, um, air, that's a big air pump. That's one of those serious air pumps. So is there a air stone or something in the bucket or something? No, that's a fan over there. Whew, we got some thermal barrier going on. Look at this thermal drop down right there. <laughs> this is a sealed garden okay so this is a 702 call it could go either way because maybe it's a customer that i don't like that left bad reviews let's see what happens good morning you're on with the grow boss good morning grow boss how you doing brother oh it's going to be a friendly local caller good morning i'm doing so well how are you today sir fantastic so I just want you to know that while a 702 area code is calling me, a 207 area code is calling me as well. So 207, I'll get back to you in a sec. 702, what can I do for you today? How can you help us out with finishing as far as drying and curing in this miserable Las Vegas heat? Oh, the heat's easy. Don't cure it outside. I bet your house is nice and cool, right? Um, we're running about 80 degrees, but I've had issues with my air conditioner it keeps going out of me. And so I'm dealing with the extreme heat this summer. Hang on. Hydroponics. Hello? Hey. Yes, hydroponics. I can't find Myco Chum either. I think they just gave up on that product. Frankly, you could just add a little bit of sweet, like a floor nectar or a sweet or any of the things that have the carbs or carbs from carbo load from advanced nutrients, anything like that. All right, wait, 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 wait. But listen, I got to tell you something. I'm doing my live webcast right now. So I've got somebody in my other ear. I've got 160 people watching you and I do this. So listen, the store opens at 10. You can call me back after that, okay? Or you're welcome to come in. Oh, you're watching me on here too. Bob ball buster. Thanks for the call. Okay. <laughs> All right, listen, don't call the store. Call 84 Grow Boss because I'm just going to sort of have to end the call like that. All right. So 702. Bah. Hi. Oh, it's 938. I don't open yet. Uh, you know what, though? Let's see. Uh, give me one sec. All right. 702. Give me, give me one sec. Give me one sec. Let's, uh, you guys can listen while I got handle this. Hey, I don't open for like 20 minutes, and I'm doing a live webcast. You're not on the camera right now. Did you want to? Did you want? You're, dude, I'm always welcome to put customers on cam if you want to come in and hang out for a minute. But, like, it's a live webcast, and it's on cam. Okay, but if you come in the store, you run the risk of being on camera. That's fine. Okay, come on in. And then lock the door behind you. There's cold water over there. All right. Boy, how times are changing. So, thanks. Lock the door. Top lock. Gah. So, okay, 702. So, in terms of that, like, 80 degrees isn't bad. Now, we were talking last week and a couple people had some comments about finishing and really lowering the temperatures down to like 67 and that seemed to be going you know there seemed to uh heading to the hydro store after you're on the air customer cam oh dude yeah totally um oh dude yeah so totally so i, I see your point um <laughs> oh p jammer okay but 
Oh, Ralph. Okay, so you so you tell me, like, I mean, these guys were talking about 67 degrees really bringing out the sub-70, really bringing out the smell and the scent glands and doing it like that. So is there a room in your house that might be colder than the other rooms? No, average, I'm going to average about 80 to 85 degrees inside the house. Um, so the, the problem is, is that the first one we did, um, within two days, everything was dry and brittle. And it just sucked. There was just no moisture in the air, so it just ah. sucked out of it. And and so I thought after two days it'd be just fine. But like I said, they were just they just fell apart. Everything crumbled on me. Okay, so I totally know who this is, and you're awesome. I totally know who this is. So, um, there you go. Um, you would have to uh, you would have to either add a little humidity, or you should have taken them out after 18 hours if it was that dry and jarred them up. See, the thing about that jar is, the thing about the jar is, it's meant because there's three different parts in the plant. There's intracellular, extracellular, and vascular moisture in the plant. And the thing about jars is, and the thing that sort of plays into, the, into that is the jars, there's a drying part and then there's the curing part, which is as the THC converts and the cannabinoids convert. So in this case, you went too long because it was too dry. You did not take into account um, how fast it was going to dry. You would have taken your bud, put it in a jar like this, and you would have allowed, uh, after the extracellular moisture had evaporated, you would have allowed the intracellular moisture to move to move into the extracellular space as the vascular moisture moved into the extracellular space as well. But the vascular moisture, that's the stems and sticks that people say, wait till that cracks. So you let the humidity go too low instead of, but instead of adding like a humidifier, which to me always seems silly, you should have jarred it up sooner. And then you would have waited 12 hours. I mean, if you were to go outside, grab a branch off a plant, strip off a fistful of leaves, put it in a plastic shopping bag. In an hour, that plastic shopping bag is going to be 100 degrees and 102% humidity. It will be built up on the bags because that's what the leaves do. They transpire water and the hotter it gets and the more humid it gets, the more energy the leaves have to make to get the water to, to, to evaporate as transpiration. So they raise the temperature in the bag and literally the temperature of the bag will be hotter than ambient. So you should have put them in a jar sooner. Now, this is a Bovida or an Integra Boost Humidity Pack. This is one of those things, 207, give me a minute. So this is one of those things that you would have, once you've burped it a couple of times, if it wasn't so dry and vague, like you might've taken it out of this, put it back on the drying rack for four hours then put it back in here. Then you would take something like this and this would buffer it so it would start curing, but it wouldn't get any drier, it wouldn't get any more humid. It would sort of stay in this range and whether that be 55 or 62, whatever the percent. Now, there's one other product that comes into play here and that is, grow bosses, that is this. This is called Air Out. And this is not the same thing. These are oxygen absorbing pads. So once this is not the silica that's in, this is not the rice that they put in salt. This is not the silica packets that they put in pills or whatever else. This is something specific. And this absorbs oxygen. The same way that astronauts have those candles that release oxygen when they burn, here is air out. This is, this is an anoxidizer. I don't know what it is, but it takes the oxygen out of the air. So once you've reached the right humidity and you have the balance with the with whatever you're looking to 55 or 62 percent, whatever it is, once you're at that point, once you're going to let it store, you would then put it in a vacuum bag and put some air out in it because if there's any oxygen left, because even though you might compress the bud a little, there's still some oxygen in between the, the, the leaves of the bud. This absorbs the rest of the oxygen. And what is oxygen? Nothing but an oxidizer. It's just a bill on Capitol Hill. And oxygen is an oxidizer. So this is the relationship between curing and drying. You had an, the temperature was probably okay, even though they've been saying that it should be, um, um, 
so this guy, so great Nate says he used it once and it took the smell away and weakened the flavor. Notice he did not say that it changed the high. I'm just suggesting that that's the, see, and then here, part, partly cloudy loves him. Um, he put something in his pocket. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll have to watch for that shit. <laughs> Keep your eye on him by the security counter. <laughs> hey, listen, if one of you guys want to come and tell a story about, dude, did you guys, you, you came into my shop first, didn't you? So how'd you hear about the shop? Um, actually through another buddy of mine who uh, was, used to watch a lot of your videos. Oh, from another guy who watched the videos? Yeah, he, he started watching your videos and then he came in here and he would buy stuff and he bought a, bought a book and he was like, hey, this dude's real boss and man, you gotta check him out. I first started watching your videos as well. Um, fucking learned a lot from watching videos, but I came in, bought some supplies, uh, found out I was doing some stupid shit, was reading your book, and I was like, dude, the way, the way that you just described it, Yeah, because you've been getting better, yeah. I've noticed too. Because you don't come in here with questions about bugs and problems and shit. Yeah. Right, right, <laughs> right, <laughs> right. A little more of the finesse than the problem solving, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, a, yeah, sweet. You know he's going to totally want store credit now when, we're, uh, when I get off the show. <laughs> 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 So that's, uh, anyway, that's what I do is I don't teach you guys how to grow. I teach you how to think about the equipment and how to handle the problems and how to do this because, all right, hey, listen, thanks for the call. Let me, I got, I'm going to try to get one more. Oh, I was hoping to get a uh, 207 in, but I was, I got 15 minutes. These guys are way early. 916. Good morning. Good morning, girl boss. Just a quick question for you. If you're flowering in, uh, Let's see, two, two by four tent. Let me turn this down here. Yeah. Two by four tent, and you're using uh, uh, same genetics, same same media, same everything. One you got a 315 LEC, the other one's a 400 watt uh, HPS. Are you you're gonna are you gonna get less weight with the 315 because it's 85 watts less? Okay. So everything has a conversion factor. Um, even the CFLs, 25 watts that work just like bah. All right, listen, I got your call. Let me, I want to get 207 on. I'll answer your call. But hey, 207. Hey, good morning. 207. Give me one second. I'll be right with you. So the, the, th the thing about it is uh, they all have different efficiency ratings. And all the spectrums, listen, there's only one range of spectrum, right? When we talk about spectrum, there is only one range of spectrum. So let's take a look at let's take a look at a uh, light spectrum so there's only this one range of spectrum uh, let's see maybe I got a let's try it light spectrum okay whether you can see it or not you know this is the visible light there's way more than just visible light there's what the predator can see there's ultraviolet and infrared there's all you know infrared and ultraviolet at these low and high ends this is what they use for microwaves this is what's filtered out in our atmosphere so when we talk about spectrum wh whatever you can only produce these colors and you can tell me that your spectrum is better than this or that but there comes a point where just like nutrients and just like anything the spectrum is perfect and it doesn't matter if you add more spectrum unless you add more canopy because you can't get more weight on the same plant. Now, I will say that you can use the word headlight, but we all know that there are different kinds of headlights because you always see that Arctic blue headlight with those HIDs, you know what I mean? Those custom headlights and they require an inverter to go from a 12 volt card or whatever the fuck those things are. But this is my observation is that there is a conversion. A 25 watt CFL measured from behind the balls is just like 100 watts. This light is just like that light. This light's the best spectrum. Blah, 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 blah. They all have real conversions. The, C, the, the CMHs 
seem to put out more light per watt and they don't seem to put out as much heat as they seem to put out about as much light like as hids so if you're comparing it to t5s they put out more light uh, they seem to put out heat that's closer to a t5 than it is an hid so while all light is heat wait wait did i just mute myself press the wrong button okay so while all light is heat in the end, what it turns out is that it all but is the same and all the spectrums are the same. So I see your point. And yes, I do think that the 315 puts out more because I, I got it because I remember that picture I showed you guys a few weeks ago. I wonder if I can find it. Um, I specifically had this show guy who had was it was it Brian? Oh, no, Brian was the awful pictures. Uh no i had this guy who sent me a 315 in like a corner of something and the cmh light there was like i have never seen a light get so wide so fast as as a as a cmh light i mean those um and what we're talking about here is uh let's see what we're talking about here is this light in particular is these LECs like this and those CMH like in that shape like those lights like nothing throws light down at, I mean as wide as fast as like these new lights that they have and so I was I mean the garden was a disaster and a complete failure however it wasn't because of the light but the one thing that I did notice about that light was that it got wide fast so I would suggest that you look at the light line um, in the walls because nothing spread light out faster like that CMH, LEC, um, those, those new types of hoods. So it's too bad I couldn't find you that picture. But yeah. Um, anyway, so that was, uh, that, okay, 207. I got about 10 minutes left, 207. Sorry, I got off track. What can I do for you? Oh, don't tell me I lost you. 207. Come on, call me back. Oh, I guess. Can I? Can I call 207? Oh, no, I have to pay for it. Aha, it's Skype, Skype subscription. Yeah, yeah. So, Skype subscription. So, 207, call me back. I got a couple more minutes on the show. Um, Okay, listen, see, G G Gerardo, God, you know, you almost want to say it like with an accent, and then you just don't know what to do. Uh, William Stryker, 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 bring her down safe, Stryker. Okay, so, um, Geral Gerardo, Her Gerardo, hey, Morales, the thing is, you can produce more photons, but that is exactly my point. If, if your plants want 10 photons, you know what I mean? Like, however you were going to say it, they just want 10 photons per plant, whatever that is. If you put 15 po photons where only 10 photons will fit, you have to raise your light 50% further because your plants don't want more photons. So if you take the same light and you pack it down, you increase the intensity. My observation is from growing in a store that plants do not want more light. They want less light because you guys are killing your shit all the time with too much light. Oh, it's 626. Damn it. I was hoping it was 207. 207. Call me back. Did I answer your call? Uh. Ooh, those are some. <laughs> Listen, I'm not in any rush. Wait, let me. Uh, I don't need to do that. Let me. Let me. I'll show you. I just got an email with some pictures. Ouch. It hurts. It hurts real bad. Oh, you want to see him too? You don't want to see him. Let me. Let me, uh, oh yeah, it's always easier if you learn off other people's mistakes. Listen, I don't, dude, and that's what I mean. This guy wishes he would have learned it a lot sooner. Me too. Listen, I look at my kid. He just stopped in town. He's 23 with a couple kids and that dude learned his lessons from me. He is knocking it out of the park. I'm super pleased for him. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. My kid thanks me. Yeah, oh yeah. 
Unfortunately, thanks me for teaching him the lessons so he didn't have to learn it, which just goes to show my dumb ass. Right. Okay. So here is, let's go pop open this. So here's one picture. Woo! Those are some, those are some rough leaves, my friend. Here's the, there's some rough leaves. Oh, I think this is the guy. I've got one more picture here of the guy I was like, uh, I'm not sure if they're worth saving. So I've, I think this was that. Oh, here's the shitty plants. Not this one. These are different shitty plants. <laughs> I've got more shitty plants for you in a minute. Let me show you the, listen, there are more shitty plants than great looking plants. Okay. Um, okay. Those are rough. Those are rough plants, my friend. Those are, okay, so, yeah, okay, so there you go. There's, uh, those are, uh, yeah, okay, there we go. Rough plants. All right. So those are rough plants. Now, one of the things that I always tell you got to watch for is overwatering, right? And what's the thing for overwatering? Bean stalking. Why doesn't the plant get wide? Why aren't there, why aren't there just nodes? Why aren't there just branch and branch? Nope, not that. Why aren't, why isn't there just branch and branch and branch and branch and branch and branch with branches on the branches because when you do this right the shit grows like a fucking weed right so where are all these things duh it's overwatered. why because it's got bean stalking and it's not just the bean stalking blap look at how purple it is Look at how purple that is. And look at, I mean, you know what I mean? That's like tying the end of your finger purple. Right, right. That's crazy. So as soon as you see bean stalking with that. Now, the other thing is these leaves aren't chicken clawed yet. But when you do this right, and when we look back at, at when we look back here, there is no purple. It is green and clean and those leaves are bright and excited and ready to go and grow and this guy's in hydro and this guy's in hydro so what's the difference <laughs> watering watering there is no more there's no more feeding these because the roots have been over watered and those root hairs have died and that's why when we were talking about uh this person's grow too and we start and we start to uh, look we start to look down here uh, in their water bed there's water in there now I, my observation here was that these leaves are still flat so they have not they have not started chicken clawing yet and because it's only one level we don't know if it's going to be in stock we don't know yet I can tell you the statistical probability is super fucking high. And it's a four foot eight bowl, but look how far away it is. The problem with hydro in the T5s is the T5s, I mean, they grow cannabis, but hydro goes faster. So they tend to be able to, so if you have a four week veg and an eight week flower, 12 weeks total, you're going to be at max light at about weeks four, week four, six flower, max Q, max light, max nutrients, max plant size. So if they grow real fast, sometimes it's tough to do it like this because you run out of light so fast, especially when uh, you get somebody that you get somebody that does it in. Um, you get you get somebody that does it in this. Motherfucker, you get somebody that does it in this. Okay, so so there you go. You get somebody that has a system like this, and then they start off, you know, in a couple of weeks, they look like this. Um, just to give you guys a point of reference, this had let's let's take it. Let's see if we can see what lights were actually in this one because this is like a system or something they sell online. Um, and with the, and with the lights and stuff, like, I think this, like, cause I remember seeing this tent 
had something like like uh, this bracket in the background. So this is a system. Oh, there it is. There's the light. I think this was a four foot eight bulb. So I just want to tell you guys, if you're going in a fast system, boom, you're going to hit max Q fast. It's going to be a shorter veg. The plants are going to get bigger. So if this guy's got six plants with this light in that space, I just want to point out that if you've got, if you've got, If you've got one, two, three, four, five, ten plants in that space, you saw how big the other ones are going to get. So you're going to have to continue to pare down the light. <coughs> Sorry, you're going to have to continue to reduce plant count until you have less. Also, I'm looking at like this, and you know what? I mean, this must be how they're like a watering the plant too. So there's a lot of water, there's a lot of air, there's just a lot of agita. There's a lot of nonsense going on that just really bah drives me fucking nuts and then you know when i look at this and i think okay listen 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 we all got our we all got our own groove listen you could try it and maybe i'm right maybe i'm wrong but you always hear my comments about builders and i just want to say this guy's got like a roll-up garage door made out of the same anti-reflective ir block you know what i mean shit i mean there's just a lot going on here for a 400 watt T5 that should be hanging from the rack in your closet. From the clothes rack in your closet. Because when we examine what 400 watts of T5 is capable of growing, what do I always come back to? I always come back to this picture here because these are two six bulb T5s and this is week four veg. So we've used up six bulbs for five plants in four weeks. And you're going to tell me you got eight weeks to go. Uh, listen, if we did six bulbs in four weeks, then we got eight weeks to go. Shouldn't we need 12 more in flower? Oh, well, that makes sense because flower is twice veg. If you veg with six, you flower with 12. So all I'm saying is... It just isn't what you think. I mean, it, what you have here is like literally in this image, what you have is like when you're driving a car, what I always tell you guys is like uh, you have you have high performance tires. This is a high performance tires on a beater, yeah. four cylinder, no AC <laughs> and, a, and, and, a, and, a, and with a donut tire on the freeway. Yeah. See, as soon as I said on the freeway, you went from, oh, a donut tire to, who the fuck's got a donut tire on the freeway? And suddenly, that's the position of the system. Because you, you're you trying to grow hydro in, in, media, in, uh, in, in media light. You're trying to grow an advanced system, hydro, in a simple light system. And so all I'm saying is, is if you don't match the system, it's like putting $400 tires on a $400,000 car. You ain't going to get the performance out of $75 for a pair with a $50 mail-in rebate that you are going to get. Okay, listen, I got one more image I want to show you, and then I'm going to smoke cannabis and end the show. Yeah, fuck yeah. Right, because you guys are already in my store, and you guys have heard the same shit. That's why you guys are so good. Because it really is the same shit. Like you guys think, you know what I mean? You guys get sick of me telling you because you come in and ask me questions and I'm like, listen, this is the best answer I can give you. And then you got to interpret it. I can only take you so far with it. And then, uh, and then you got to try it a couple times, right? Okay, so what was... So this guy's picture, so download, what's it called? It's called image one. Oh, here we go. Um, put it in here. Uh, let's, okay, give me one sec. Okay, now I can do it. Open it. Okay, so, all right, um, you know, would you let him in and I'll just have to empty the show. Just let him know to stay up there for a sec. Okay, so listen, this guy is, uh, here are the shitty plants. So this guy calls me and I'm like, look, you can save him. You, and I'm showing you this specifically because that's right on track. Hey, not you. Would you have, would you tell, hey, dude, I'm just finishing up my webcast. So there's a camera here. 
Can you hang out so you're not you're not on camera up there where you guys are? Give me two minutes and I'll be right with you, okay? So this is Shitty Plants Brian. Nice guy, super funny. And he was all bitter because I told him that, you know, it kills your shit. So I just want to point out what I mean by kills your shit. Because this is this is I mean, these things look like they're they're in flower. And if they're not in flower, I would like to say they're way healthier than they were. However, I just want to point out that even though you rescued them, congratulations, you know, Mazel tov, you know what I mean? Like, even though you rescued them, I just want to point out that, dude, your plants just look like this. And in your bucket, it's full of soil. And I can see it through the plants like that. And when I look at just all of your plants, they all look like, they all look like this dude. And that really sucks. Why? Because when you look at this, <laughs> they all look, they all look, oh my God, everybody's phone's blowing up, but mine, they all look like this. You know what I mean? Like you're going to strip you're, you're of course going to strip this off. And when I say, you know what I mean? Like you're going to strip this and this, but these two things here are going to grow into a trellis into a trellis like this. <laughs> They're going to grow into a trellis like this. And there is no way, especially after taking this much time to grow those plants, there is no way these plants are ever going to do that. I mean, even if you were to go ahead and strip off all this, even if you were to go ahead and strip off all this, you don't have the top count. You don't have the top count. Even this one back here, which looks moderately good, you don't have the top count. Top count. But more importantly, they're way past four weeks. This is so far past four weeks that if you had started new cuttings and clones, you would have had plants that look like this. That's all I'm saying. I'm saying good job. Sorry, that's not all I'm saying. One, I would like to say the new improved grow boss. It's friendly or interactive grow boss. Good job, Brian. You got the idea. Now, all I would like to say is this. The reality is the next time you do this, your plants will be so freaking awesome. You'll be like, oh my God, that's what the fuck everybody was talking about. Anyway, it's always a treat and a pleasure to have you guys visit me at the store. If you have any questions, you can always schedule something with me during the week. You can buy my books on my cannabis hotline. Here it is. 49 bucks for an hour. The same advice that I give you for free on the show. But for some reason, it seems to work better when you pay me $49 an hour and I yell at you. So, <laughs> right? 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 Listen, paramedic, they had to break me down and build me back up for me to be good at what I was doing. Yeah, right? So this is the books. Listen, I always appreciate you guys coming on. Um, um, yeah, buy the books. So... That's what I'm saying. It's always a treat. I'll see you guys tomorrow at 9 a.m. We'll do two hours from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. I'll answer your calls. I hope 207 calls back. 626-916. You guys call me back too. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.